In today's video, we get into three true ghost stories of real people's experiences they can't explain. Are you someone who checks under the bed for monsters before you go to sleep? Do you look in the closet to make sure there's no boogeyman waiting for you to drift off? Are you afraid of ghosts? These three true stories are not for the faint of heart. Whether you believe them or not, that's entirely up to you. I want to know what you think about these three true ghost stories of real people's experiences they can't explain down below in the comments. I never lived in a haunted house, but my mother did as a teen. And she said other houses on her street had strange things going on too. There was this family that lived a few houses away from her. And one night, the daughter went to bed with a bad headache. The next morning, she was dead. They later found out that she passed away from an aneurysm. After her funeral, the family went away to get their minds off the tragedy. And the father asked my uncle, my mom's brother, if he minded to check on their pets. Now my mom and dad were dating at the time and they went with him. My mother had heard there was a grand piano and she wanted to play it. During this time, my dad was studying to be a veterinarian. After entering the house, my uncle and my father headed to the basement to see the animals. And my mother went to the piano on the ground floor. She was playing it when she felt something brush her ankles. Her first thought was that a cat must have left the basement and walked past her. She kept playing, then she felt it again. She looked under the piano and saw nothing. When she started again, she felt hands clasp her legs tightly. She dashed to the basement door called out for my uncle and father and waited for them. Back outside, my uncle could tell my mom was shaken up and asked what was wrong. She told him what had happened and he turned white. He told her the daughter who had died used to play a game with her father. When he played the piano, she'd crawl underneath and grab his ankles and push his feet up and down on the pedals. Could this little girl still be playing games from the other side? The ambulance company that I used to work for had a haunted ambulance, Rig 12. A lot of EMTs had stories about it, but I never put much belief in the paranormal stuff. That is, until I had my own experience with Rig 12. My partner and I were working in a rural community at 3 a.m., and it was pitch dark and completely quiet. We were both dozing. I was in the driver's seat, and she was in the passenger seat. I then randomly woke up to a muffled voice. But at that time, I thought my partner was just talking. I told her I was trying to sleep and closed my eyes. I distinctly heard a male voice say, Oh my God, am I dying? Followed by a few seconds of heavy breathing. My partner and I sat straight up and looked back into the patient compartment where it sounded like the voice had come from. Things were quiet for a couple of seconds then we heard a click of an oxygen bottle regulator and a hiss, as if it was leaking. I turned on the lights and we ran out of the rig. I thought a transient might have climbed in while we were sleeping. So we reluctantly opened the rear doors and no one was there. I checked the oxygen bottles and neither was opened. After that, we really didn't get much sleep. Would you be able to work a shift on rig 12? When Marty was a child back in the 90s, she was a fan of ventriloquist Edgar Bergen and his dummy sidekick Charlie McCarthy. She says that when her father came across a ventriloquist doll as he wandered through a small magic shop located outside of Santa Rosa, California, he decided to buy it for her birthday. While ringing up the sale, Marty says the cashier gave her father weird vibes and said to him, you know when you put your hand inside the doll, he's going to come alive. Laughing off the comment, he brought the dummy home to his daughter. According to Marty, she was over the moon when her dad gave her the doll, saying I was so happy when I got that doll, I was obsessed. But before long, strange things began happening. Though impossible because the doll's head was made of hard plastic, she says its expression would change, including his smile. Worried something would happen to her precious doll, Marty's family shut it away in a cupboard most nights. One night, she and her family were awakened by the pitter-patter of steps in her living room. Thinking it was the dog or another family member, they went to look. No one was there. 
except for the doll who was just sitting on the couch. We specifically remember we always put it away because I loved that doll so much that I took care of it. Other strange occurrences began happening. While Marty and her dad were away, her uncle was alone in the house. The uncle said he heard Marty's father calling his name from the living room, even though he wasn't home. When he went to look, he found the doll, once again sitting on the couch, and no one was around. All of our family was pretty much scared of the doll, Marty says. People would start hearing their names being called, and we would hear walking at night. So we just decided we needed to get rid of it. Being Mexican and religious, Marty says her parents wanted to burn the doll in case it was demonic. They put it on the grill, and according to Marty, it wouldn't burn. This doll would not go up in flames at all whatsoever. They tried cutting it up with a knife, but were unsuccessful. Finally, they threw it in the trash can. After the garbage was collected, Marty's dad went to retrieve the bin. In it was the doll. To rid themselves of the doll, they dug a hole in the backyard then filled it with cement. Marty and the family have long since moved away, but she says they still think about the doll and the possibility that eventually it will find them.